Let's take a look at the concepts of linear regression and correlation. Uh, you can see from these formulas that there's a lot going on. These are all pretty uh, intense formulas to calculate, um, but we are going to talk about easier ways to do that. Later, um, I'll cover it in Staplet's two quantitative variables. But for now, I'm just going through the concepts, and I'm going to use Desmos to do that, um, which you can do as well. So to use Desmos to calculate correlation, um, what I always do is first add a table. Note the variables here are x1 and y1, and what I'll do is enter values I have for these variables. This would need to be matched pairs data or um, two dependent samples. So basically, uh, we have two variables, x1 and y1, measured from either the same subject or some kind of subjects that relate to one another. They don't necessarily have to be the same units. Um, so you could think of something like outside temperature and heating cost or cooling cost. So let's look at that first example, outside temperature and heating costs. Um, now I'm going to simplify this way down. Um, I'm just going to enter in really just whole numbers from 0 to 9. And I'm going to imagine kind of what that would look like um, if the temperature is low, the heating cost is higher, and that should go down. So what I'm going to do is just have it start at a value of 20 and go down by 2 as I go. Once I get them all in, I can use this zoom fit button, and you can see how that rescales it to show the points really well. But take note that we do have different scales on the X and Y axis. So what we have here is um, X1 is the explanatory variable, um, predictor variable, Y1 is the response variable. We might also say that X is an independent variable and Y is a dependent variable. So when we want to look at correlation, in Desmos we can do this really easily. We're going to use the same two variables, x1 and y1, and we're going to set up an equation to relate them using a tilde instead of an equal sign. And what we usually do is a plus bx, so this will be a plus bx1. You can also do this with the quadratic model, exponential model, all kinds of different things, which is why Desmos is really great for regression. It's also helpful to see that um, visual representation to the right. If you want to, you can look at the residuals. We don't really get into those concepts. It's just basically going to be the error between the um, predicted value of y1 and the actual value of y1. In this case, um, this is a perfect linear fit. We have 100% correlation there. Um, I don't really need to see those residuals for that. And we see that the r squared is 1. So that kind of gets us to the first concept here. Um, we look at the association. Um, we look at the scatter diagram to visualize that. But the correlation is really quantitative. And what we see is um, if these line up really well with a negative slope, we call that negative association um, or negative correlation. If they line up with a positive slope, that's positive association or positive correlation. And then the line that we um, draw to best fit the data is called a least squares regression line. It's called a least squares regression line because what essentially we do is find the distance um, from each point to the line. We add all those up and then we use calculus to minimize that. Um, so it kind of gets into the process that's taking place. The part that we really need to know is just this value of r, which is called the linear correlation coefficient. You can see um, some examples here. And all the way down at the bottom, there's a formula. That's last because really, um, typically, we find the uh, regression equation first, and then we look at r to measure the strength of that. So going back up, you can see some quick examples. Um, here's perfect negative correlation. Uh, that's as strong of correlation as you can get in the negative direction will be negative 1. If we were to square that, we'd call that the coefficient of determination. We'd label that as a percentage, and that would be squared to be 100%. In other words, 100% of the variation of the y variable can be explained by a variation of x. In other words, we don't have any variation beyond the predicted slope. So we don't have this kind of random spray pattern like we do here. Here, um, if you square that 0.94, you get 88%. So with that example, we're going to see a little bit um, more variation from that straight line. 88% could be explained by the slope of the 
um, best fit line, but there's also a um, about a 12% variation from that. So we see a little bit of a scatter. Um, here's a perfect, um, very strong positive correlation or association. So that's going to be a perfect fit, 100% fit, um, whereas here we don't have as strong of a positive correlation. These last two examples, really, we don't have any uh, linear correlation or here it's nearly zero, here it is zero, um, but that might be some other kind of um, correlation. It looks almost like a semicircle. So you could consider, um, you could have a certain equation that could model that, um, but it's just not linear. So um, the other thing I can do with Desmos is sort of demonstrate how these will pan out. Um, what I'm going to do is shift this to the top, and then I'm going to change these Y values to be um, draggable or movable in the vertical direction. And now what I'll be able to do is see how this R value changes. So changing some of these points, making it a little bit more random, um, will increase that R and R squared value. Here, um, what I'm going to try to set up is something that is kind of a scatter, but overall is a negative slope. Um, and that's kind of what I've got here. So here you can see this is 0.65 R squared or 65%. 65% of the variation of the response variable can be attributed to the variation of the explanatory variable. That's a negative 0.8 R value. So still a pretty strong association there. You can sometimes get um, a slope of nearly zero, um, but have it still be, you know, a pretty strong relationship. Um, but things kind of tend to get a little bit muddy in here. Um, so you can see here pretty strong um, correlation, but it's almost a zero slope. Um, so those formulas will work well in that situation. And then we can kind of shift this to be um, kind of a stronger positive correlation. That one's about 84% for the coefficient of determination. And then here's some examples of really sort of completely random um, variables. Lots of spread from the line. Um, this is only going to have about a 1% predictive relationship. And I could really um, kind of mess with these and make that slope very, you know, steep but still have not all that much of a predictive relationship. Um, here it's only about 27%. Now that may be significant with a large sample, but it really won't be with a small sample like this.